Hello everyone, welcome to another Collector's Corner video. We're going to be using this as a sort of mini update video as well as one to kick off an ongoing series in which we quickly and casually showcase any and all new acquisitions month to month. They will be a mix of items sent in by viewers, bought just because, and ones that were acquired for the sake of future videos, with a few hints for future topics sprinkled in as well. This leads us to the mini update we mentioned. Essentially, this monthly plan of doing these acquisition videos is part of an endeavor to make shorter but more frequently posted content that everyone can enjoy while the longer, more extensive topics seen in the history of and uniforms of the screen are researched and produced. Speaking of those series, we'll just say that a number of them are coming that'll cover unique camouflages, helmets, multinational forces, and even specialty units seen in a specific sci-fi TV show, as well as a few surprises. So keep an eye out for those. Anyway, let's jump right in. First up is this Taiwanese digital camouflage disposable face mask. A few of these were actually sent in by a viewer known only as Matt, who had mentioned they were acquired by an acquaintance of his while visiting for diplomatic reasons. Thank you, Matt, for these. We've actually used them a few times. Next up are a few different headpieces. This Bahraini naval cap in a pattern almost identical to the discarded US Navy NW Type 1s. Then we have these three helmets, a Bulgarian M36C, an East German M56-76, and a Canadian Mark II. All three of these were obtained from a local auction, with all of them being improperly labeled. Granted, they aren't the rarest of helmets, they seem to be creeping up in value. From the same auction comes this amazing 1936 dated German Tornister or knapsack. These were essentially the equivalent of a German patrol pack allowing German troops of the Wehrmacht, SS, and other forces to carry the essentials as well as secure a Zeltsbahn or blanket around it. Moving one country and about 20 years over is this somewhat beat up Austrian Kaz 57 Parker. These are a bit harder to find compared to other ones out there. Austrian parkas and really many other PDOT type jackets frequently seem to be just thrown up on eBay under more generalized names, which often work to many people's benefits. This was one of those cases. While still on heavier items, we have this South Korean geometric jacket. It doesn't appear to have any government tags and was likely a commercially bought item, as the pattern hasn't been used in quite some time. Coats and jackets are often mocked up this way after conscripts are discharged. They often harken back to things like their tour, units, accomplishments, and other factors related to their time in the armed forces. Staying with the Rock or Republic of Korea, we have this UN contingent six color chocolate chip uniform. The pattern was used for only a short time and not in large quantities, so finding a set with UN patches made it an even cooler find. Up next is a jacket that was seen in this Singaporean video. It appears to be something of a commercial piece with the pattern being based on the somewhat mysterious lizard camouflage. However, this one will be used again in a future video. Don't want to give too much away though. Jumping again, we have this pretty neat 1981 dated US Air Force ERDL jacket. A few patches seem to have been removed, but it still seems like it's in fantastic condition for its age. The interesting bit about this jacket is that it was likely one of the last ERDL batches as that year the US woodland pattern made its debut. Next up are a pair of Egyptian pieces, specifically a three-color desert and an interesting blue way of a woodland pattern used by their navy. A number of nations throughout the Middle East and Africa over the last few years have been having their uniforms produced in China. As of late, it seems that some of the rejected, damaged, and or overflow ones have been hitting more mainstream websites like eBay. Though you can get garments like these on some sites like Alibaba and Taobao through some of the factories that make them, trying to buy low quantities is often hard and time-consuming. Speaking of which, another uniform that sort of falls into this category is this Yemeni Woodland Marpat clone. The cut is somewhat different, but the pattern is pretty close to the original. Relatively close geography-wise, we now have two more Middle Eastern uniforms from neighboring countries of Bahrain and Qatar. This Bahraini pattern is used by the Royal Guards as well as members of the BDF, or Bahrain Defense Force, while the Qatari pattern is actually a variant of their standard issue one reserved for units of the National Security Authority, which has been in charge of managing, enforcing, and running everything related to the national conscription since 2015. And finally, to wrap things up, we have perhaps one of the hardest to find items to acquire in the grouping, an Iranian woodland uniform. Apart from Iranian uniforms and military in general being relatively hard to source in many parts of the world, a lot of the stuff that does make it out is not entirely authentic. Many uniforms have been dubbed as market or bizarre ones as they are often created by tailors and merchants to sell. It's a bit hard to tell as Iran has and still uses various camouflages and uniforms of varying quality and looks. Throw on assorted patches and insignia that appear to be put on rather haphazardly and you have yourself a massive case of is this authentic or not. Right now it's Schrodinger's uniform. It's both a fake and real deal until we verify it or someone comes along and tells us what it is. More research is definitely required. 
But that will do it for everything that came in January 2022. Again, this video was a quick one and is sort of a way for us to fulfill a New Year's resolution to get more content out on something of a more structured basis. Hopefully it was a quick and enjoyable watch and holds everyone over until the next big video. We'll be back in March to cover February's acquisitions. Until then though, be sure to like and subscribe or check back soon for more videos right here on Uniform History.